Hello friends and welcome to Zona Disc Golf. Okay, we continue our journey to understand the flight of a disc with the first of the chapters uh, devoted to the aerodynamics. Okay, we're gonna begin with the speed number, you know, the four classical flight numbers. The first one is the speed. Uh, first thing is it should not be called speed, <laughs> it should be called drag. Uh, we all know that if you throw a fast disc uh, this with a higher speed, it, it won't reach uh, necessarily further away than the, than a slow disc. Uh, the drag is the measure of the uh, air, the resistance that the air inflicts to the disc for the fact of traveling through it. Okay, we have uh, our disc. Mm, all the aerodynamic forces are calculated the same way. Uh, that that is good for us. The, the formula we just adapt on the situation. Uh, the formula is uh, the aerodynamic force is uh, one and a, uh, one half, so it's a number, okay, uh, times the air density. If we have a thick air, the aerodynamic forces will be higher than, the, than if we have a thin air. Uh, all the forces, not just the drag, but also the lift, the turn, the fade, etc. We will see on the end of the course in an appendix. We will study the effects of the of the um, atmosphere, uh, temperature, humidity, etc. on the flight of the disc. Uh, times the uh, reference area of the of the disc. The reference area is the area of the disc in the direction that we are studying with this force. If we are studying the drag force, we should take the, the lateral surface of the disc. Uh, I have two, the two extremes. Okay, I have a 13 speed driver and a 1 speed putter. We see the, the difference already. If we take the, a rule and we measure, we have some 21 centimeters uh, diameter, more or less. It's, all of them are the same. Uh, which is the thickness of this disc? This is something around... 15 millimeters. Okay, so let's say, well, instead of 21, we want to say 20. 20 millimeters times uh, 20 centimeters times one and a half centimeters. It's 30 square centimeters. So the the frontal area of this disc is more or less 30 square centimeters. If we take this putter, this is much thicker. It's two centimeters thick. So it's 20 centimeters of diameter times two centimeters of, of width is more or less a rectangle of 40 square centimeters. So it's not a pure square, we should have to take this into account, but to make to take the idea, this is 30 and this is 40. So this is this has 25% less surface exposed to the air. So it should be more or less 25% less drag than the putter. So this is the first reason why the drivers are thinner than the putters. Okay, uh, we have to multiply this area by the uh, speed, uh, the velocity of the disc squared. That is important. That means that when the speed is low, the effects of aer aerodynamics are low uh, and vice versa. If we throw a disc at 80 kilometers an hour and then it slows down at up to, let's say, 40 kilometers an hour, uh, the speed is half now but the aerodynamic forces are one quarter. This is the, the square root of the uh, original uh, aerodynamic forces. So aerodynamic forces are very important when the disc is traveling very far. When you make it drive on the beginning of the flight, it's very important. When you putt, they say, okay, if you are seven meters away from the basket, take any any putter that feels good in your hands because it doesn't really matter. And it's, and, and, and it's true because uh, at seven meters, the speed that you're going to throw on the disc, unless there is some heavy gusts of wind, uh, the aerodynamic effects are very, very small. No, it's more important for the beginning of the of a drive. And the last uh, uh, factor of this of this formula is the, uh, the, co mm, the aerodynamic coefficient. Coefficient means it's a number. There is no units. It's just a small number. If we talk about drag, uh, we're talking about the, you know, the CD, the, from the famous coefficient of drag, or CX. Uh, the, the cars tend to, to announce it. So this car has a 0 0.36 uh, CX, okay, uh, coefficient. Uh, 
It, it depends only on the shape of the body, uh, on its size, and on the range of uh, wind speeds, of air speeds. Uh, those two numbers get uh, resumed in the Reynolds number. It's a big number, so this uh, study is valid for that size of object for those uh, air speeds. Um, which is the most aerodynamic force that we can build? If we have a okay, some, some mud and we can build, uh, build a, a shape, which would be the most aerodynamic shape? Maybe some of you have guessed it. It's the, you know, the, uh, a drop of water, no? the, a, a raindrop. Uh, it falls from the sky and it gets the most aerodynamic shape to fall as fast as possible because it has the freedom to, to choose whatever it wants. It's almost, almost exactly true. The, the, the water suffers from the uh, superficial tension, so it, it wants to offer the least amount of surface exposed to the air. So it's not absolutely free to get any shape it, it wants. So the most aerodynamic shape is like a drop of water, but more, more a, longer, a longer raindrop, like something like this. But it's quite close. We see that the most aerodynamic shape is round on the front, but, uh, you know, thin as a, as a knife uh, on the back. So here comes the first myth. Uh, some people say, okay, the, the driver is very fast because it cuts the air like a knife. That's not exactly true. That's not the cause. Uh, the most efficient uh, shape is round on the front and, and like a knife on the back. That is the, the, you know, the, an airplane, an airfall, they tend to be built this way. But we have to choose, of course, because our disc is turning, so the, the back becomes the front, of the front becomes the back. So uh, we have to choose. When we uh, go through the air, the, let's suppose that the air is uh, like a pack of, of sheets of paper, and we want to go through and we want to disturb the, the layers of air as, as least, uh, the, le, the least possible. If we create, uh, if we the, the, air, the air follow our discs, but the rear part is a blunt edge, the air is not able to follow this contour and it creates here a turbulence area, so it's a low pressure area. It's not a pure vacuum, but it's a small vacuum. Let's suppose that you have a vacuum cleaner always uh, <laughs> absorbing behind your disc, it's gonna slow it down. But if you have a driver, the air is able to follow this contour and the area of wake turbulence is much smaller. So there is less uh, vacuum cleaner <laughs> behind your disc. Uh, so that's why the, the drivers have less air resistance than the putters. Basically because of two things. First, they have a smaller uh, reference area. And second, they have a better aerodynamic shape. Not that much because of the front, but because of the, of the back of the disc. Another small detail that we have to keep in mind is the, the notion of relative wind. It's quite well known. Uh, if we travel through the air and the air is still, the, the disc sees or feels the, its own velocity. If it's uh, 80 kilometers an hour and the air is still, it feels like it 80 kilometers an hour. If there's a 20 kilometers uh, an hour uh, headwind, it will feel as, it fe as, it's, as if it's flying at 100 kilometers an hour. And with a 20 kilometer tailwind, it will feel like it's flying at 60 kilometers an hour. It doesn't care about the ground speed, it just cares about the airspeed. But this uh, relative wind is not only applicable to the horizontal speed, but it's also important for the vertical speed. When the disc is flying horizontally, uh, the, there is no um, vertical speed, vertical wind speed, if the air is absolutely still. But if the disc is uh, flying uh, upwards, okay, let's say it's flying 10 degrees upwards, it's feeling the air as hitting 10 degrees downwards. It's the same as if we tilt 10 degrees the disc uh, um, downwards, the, the nose down, and we travel horizontally, it's the same thing. So when you're going up, the air is not hitting horizontally, it's hitting from the top. And the same thing happens when the disc is going down, if it's going down at 10 degrees, 
the air is heating 10 degrees from below. So this is important thing that we will study on the uh, lift, turn and fade uh, chapters. Okay, and the second thing we have to keep in mind is, uh, okay, we have that aerodynamic force and uh, that aerodynamic force has to be applied in some point. That point is called the center of pressure and it's, uh, again, it's the sum of the uh, the drag of the this point, of this point, of this point, of this point, you sum all of them and you get one aerodynamic drag applied on, a, on an imaginary point with a long uh, arrow, a long vector, and it's applied on that center of pressure. In the case of a disc, uh, that uh, center of pressure is located uh, slightly behind the center of the disc and slightly below. And that is because that uh, feature that all the discs have, which is the, the rim, we use it to grab and to throw it, but it's also important because if the disc uh, was absolutely flat, like a vinyl, like a music vinyl, it will go to the sky and it will fall immediately. Because we need to keep the nose down. When the center of pressure is slightly below and is slightly behind the center of mass, we introduce a momentum, as we, as we saw before with a, with a spin. Let's suppose that you have a string, which is the weight of the disc pulling down from the center of mass, and you have another string pulling uh, backwards from the center of pressure, which is the air drag. If you throw like this and like this, the nose will go slightly below. Okay, so that, that aero drag keeps the nose down of the, of the disc, and that's what uh, makes the, the flight of the frisbee possible. That is um, uh, absolutely necessary to keep the, the disc more or less balanced. Okay, so let's continue to understand the flight of a disc and see you on Zona Disc Golf.